Hey, welcome back. We're in Exodus 23, verses 32 and 33. Going to finish the chapter this morning. Here they are. You shall make no covenant with them or with their gods. They shall not live in your land because they will make you sin against me. For if you serve their gods, it will surely be a snare to you. So we're talking about these nations that are to be driven out. We read about them up here at verse uh, 23. My angel, this is part of the command we already studied the previous mornings. My angel will go before you and bring you into the land of the Amorites, Hittites, the Perizzites, Canaanites, Hivites, and Jebusites. There's the six nations that are listed there. Often there's seven listed, but they're the big six. And uh, their command is God's going to utterly destroy them at the end of verse 23. God's people are simply to cooperate and do their part that he tells them to do. They really don't, they don't ever really do it. They, they, they're partial so notice this warning in verse 32 and 33 that we read this morning. You, you know, what are you to do with these people? Are you to compromise? Are you to bring them in? Are you to be buddies and buddies with these people? Again, these are, these are not neutral people. These are followers of fake deities. These are followers of gods that do not exist. These are idolaters and people that are basically living by a false religion. God's people are living by the true, the, the, the truth, the actual facts of the universe. There's one God, and he's their God, and they're his people. And so they're supposed to live that way. And you can't just blend in and stuff and do, you know, 31 flavors of religion, you know, and we have mint, mint chocolate chip over here and caramel over here and strawberry. That's not the way it works. Uh, you have to do what God says. You have to do it his way. It is always a blessing to do it his way. So God says, don't make any covenants with them. Don't do the, after their deeds, as we've re been reading in this chapter. Verse 33, they shall not live in your land. Because you see, God owns the land. God parcels it out to whom he will. For a period of time, the Amorites and so on have, have had the land. But God is, is uh, their iniquity becomes full. God judges them. They're to be completely eliminated, removed. And God's going to do most of the removing here. And then God's people come in and, uh, yeah, start doing their stuff. So God says, don't... Uh, don't allow this. They will not live in your land. Why? There's a reason why. There's an absolute, there's a reason why. Verse 33, because they will make you sin against me. Their influence is going to be such with their fake, false, untrue, pseudo, uh, their wrong, factually incorrect, uh, useless religion, because they worship God not as he is. They're going to lead them into trouble. And so God says, no, that's not my plan for you. My plan is blessing for you. My plan is goodness for you. My plan is to give you the good things. I send my rain on the evil and the just, but I would that everybody would be just. And so, yeah, God wants to send his rain on the just. He wants to give the good things, the blessing, the blessings that have already been described, some of it in this chapter. So if, we, uh, if they allow the people to remain... You will serve their gods, and he says, and it will surely be a snare to you. And that's exactly what it was, no surprise. God tells him right here, right here, Moses, through the, through the work of Moses, God in, in gives in, in scripturates these words, these ideas, and tells them, look, you want to do what I say because otherwise, otherwise you're going to be basically harming yourself. I will not be able to bless you as I so strongly desire to bless you. And, and when we come over into our uh, Christian experience today, we want to do what God says. We want to make it easy for God to bless us. We don't want anything to be in the way. And we want to find out what Jesus says to do, and then we want to simply do it. Is that so weird? Is that, is that so strange? Is that so something that we can't do with the Spirit of God living in our heart, with God transforming us, with us becoming more like Jesus? It is absolutely what we can do. So we'll leave it there, but my counsel to you is just, again, the counsel that Mary gave them uh, back there in the Gospel of John, right? Whatever Jesus says to you, do it. Some of the best life advice you will ever receive. Whatever Jesus says to you, do it. See you tomorrow morning.